Paul had stopped on his way to Jerusalem in Miletus in order to encourage the church leaders in Ephesus in what he sensed might be his last journey. As Paul arrived here in Jerusalem, he was advised by some of his friends to go to the temple and take part in some of the rites of purifications. The accusation against Paul was that he was converting Gentiles and telling them not to keep the ceremonial law. And some of his friends thought that if he himself participated, it would go a long way to removing this objection. Their strategy was misguided though, for they failed to grasp the level of anger and hatred against him. After several days, some Jews from Asia Minor recognized him and raised the alarm. And if it wasn't for the intervention of the Roman commander, Paul might have lost his life. Paul was taken to prison where his status as a Roman citizen afforded him the privilege of not being beaten, but he still knew that he was not safe. About 40 or so Jews took an oath that they wouldn't eat or drink anything until Paul was dead. Paul's sister's son heard about this ambush and came and warned Paul, who told him to tell the guards. They, taking this threat seriously, arranged for Paul to be transported here to Caesarea at night and put under the protection of Felix. Both Claudius and Felix did not see any weight of evidence in what they were charging Paul with and realized that it was a doctrinal issue over Jewish beliefs that they were trying to kill Paul about. Felix is not known as being a noble man. One historian is quoted as saying, he has the power of a king and the temper of a slave yet even he could find no reason to execute Paul, and the Jewish leaders were defeated at trial. After the trial, Felix called for Paul and gave him a hearing. The Bible says in Acts 24 verse 25 that he reasoned about righteousness, temperance, and the judgment to come. But sadly, Felix, under conviction, told Paul to go away for now, and when I have a convenient time, I will call for you. We never hear of Felix calling for Paul again. Paul remained here in prison for two years. Felix wasn't courageous enough to release a man he knew was innocent. And after he was called back to Rome, he was replaced by Festus as the regional leader. The Jewish leaders and high priest petitioned Festus to have Paul tried in Jerusalem. Initially, he refused, but they traveled here to Caesarea and petitioned again. And wanting to win favor with them, he asked Paul if he would be willing to go. Paul knew that the plan was to kill him on the way, and so now he exercised his right as a Roman citizen to stand before Caesar. Festus answered, unto Caesar you have appealed, and unto Caesar you will go. While Paul was waiting here for the ship to take him to Rome, King Agrippa and his wife Bernice came by to see Festus and hearing about Paul's situation, they asked to see him. Right here in this room, Paul was able to give a defense of his faith and his powerful testimony and it's recorded in Acts chapter 26. When he was finished, King Agrippa, maybe unaware of his surroundings for a few moments said, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. These two men, Felix, who asked for a convenient time, and Agrippa, who was almost persuaded, represent a large class of people today. Those who are convicted, but are stubborn, and those who want a better time where there's no obstacles to give their life to Jesus. If you are thinking of giving your life to Jesus today, don't delay. The best time to give your life to Jesus is always the earliest time. May we not be almost persuaded like Agrippa, but fully persuaded of who Jesus is and what he has done for us today.